Right, come on then, let's get to it. Um, uh, I've talked about the vagus nerve before. There's a lot to talk about with the vagus nerve because it does so much stuff. Today, I want to do a visual thing. I want to start at the brainstem and follow the vagus nerve down the neck, into the thorax, through the thorax, and into the abdomen. I want you to see where the vagus nerve runs, how it runs, the major structures that it runs with, so that you will always be able to remember how to find the vagus nerve. I'm not going to talk about all of the minor branches, I'm just going to talk about its major root, um, and I'm going to try and avoid talking about function, but you know what it's like. We'll talk about some of the functions of the vagus nerve as we go through, all right? Just a little bit, a little bit. Okay, uh, if we're going to describe the path of the vagus nerve, we're going to have to start with the brain, uh, the brain, sorry, because it is one of the cranial nerves. Why is the vagus nerve so interesting? Well, right, uh, the vagus nerve carries parasympathetic motor fibers from the brain stem down into the neck, chest, and abdomen. And the parasympathetic nervous system um, is the rest and digest side of the autonomic nervous system. You know, slows your heart rate, kicks off digestion, that sort of thing. Kind of works against the sympathetic division of the nervous system in many cases. The sympathetic side being your fight or flight, your adrenaline response. So the vagus nerve is responsible for innovating these major organs, right? That's why its root is so interesting. It's also carrying some visceral afferents, that is sensory fibers from the organs back to the brain, because the brain is also monitoring what's going on down here and responding to that, right? So, Brian, uh, cerebrum, brainstem, pons, medulla, and I quite like this model because the cranial nerves are clearly labeled, which means I'll never use this in an exam, but we can see in the medulla oblongata, cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, leaves the medulla oblongata just posterior to the olive here. Uh, so by cranial nerve, we mean peripheral nerves that come out of the brainstem. Spinal nerves are nerves that come out of the spinal cord. They're all peripheral nerves. So this is a peripheral nerve that comes out of the brainstem, and then it's gonna leave the cranial cavity um, pretty immediately. Right, skull. Skull. Take off the skull cap. And I have chosen a painted skull. So inside here, the dual venous sinuses have been painted blue and the arteries have been painted red. And I'll show you the reason why I've done that. So. Now there's anterior, I'm going to turn this around, we're looking at the back of the head now, the occipital region, tilt that up. Uh, the big hole here is foramen magnum, and right next to it there is the jugular foramen. You can see the blue paint going to that. The vagus nerve leaves the cranial cavity by passing out through the jugular foramen. It's called the jugular foramen because the internal jugular vein also starts here. These dural venous sinuses, these sinuses um, collecting blood from inside the cranial cavity, from the brain, um, leave through that hole. And at the other side of the skull then, we see the internal jugular vein, and that descends through the neck. Oh look, the vagus nerve is right next to it. The other thing we've got here is there's another hole and that hole is the canal for the internal carotid artery and that is right next to the internal the jugular foramen for the internal jugular vein so the 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 internal carotid artery and the internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve all enter and leave the skull 
very near to each other. So what we see in the neck is we see a connective tissue tube forming uh, attached to the base of the skull, which then descends through the neck surrounding those blood vessels. Now the internal carotid artery is a branch of the common carotid artery. So in the neck, I'll see the carotid sheath, that's that fascial tube, and if I open that up, in there I will find the common carotid artery, nice big blood vessel, the internal jugular vein, nice big blood vessel, and I'll find the vagus nerve descending down here. Another model. Here we go. The red structures here are the arteries. So down here we've got the common carotid artery and this branch in here is the internal carotid artery that's gonna supply blood to the brain. And that yellow structure we can see running with it, I can confidently identify as the vagus nerve because I know that's where the vagus nerve runs. We just don't have the internal jugular vein on here. But I do have another model that does. We are swapping to the left side now because the right side is still covered by muscle. Just so you're aware of how deep we are. And look, internal jugular vein, common carotid artery, and it's not on this model, but in there would be the vagus nerve. It's, <laughs> the vagus nerve is a significant nerve um, but it is a lot smaller than the blood vessels here. But it's running down here, so it run down, runs down the neck. Now I know that uh, the vagus nerve is gonna have a role in innovating the muscles of the palate, in innovating the muscles of the pharynx, which is involved in swallowing. It's also going to innovate the whole of the larynx. It's gonna have a couple of different branches, but it's gonna be sensory from inside the larynx. It's gonna be motor to all the muscles of the larynx. So it's, as it's descending, it's giving off branches that do things, but it keeps on going down into the chest. And I can't show you exactly where it goes, but it, it, I find it uh, posterior to the veins here and anterior to the artery. I have another, <laughs> I have another model. <laughs> We're almost into the thorax. So we're still in the neck here. Look, this is the laryngeal prominence, the thyroid cartilage. So this is the larynx here. And, oh, I've got a bunch of nerves. Hmm. That's the brachial plexus going to the upper limb. Um, but see this nerve here that's running with the artery? The veins are here, but they've been cut. So that nerve there, that's the left vagus nerve. And then on the right, this nerve here running with the blood vessel, so this is the common carotid artery here, that's the right vagus nerve. So this nerve here and this nerve here, which are a little more lateral, well it helps if you can see where they go and then you can be confident in what they are, but these are going to be the phrenic nerves. Um, I know they're going to come out of um, C3, 4, 5 spinal nerves. They're anterior to the anterior scalene muscle. They're going to run down to the diaphragm through the pericardium. But we're not talking about the phrenic nerve today, are we? We're talking about the vagus nerve. But those are the two nerves that, you know, those are the two major nerves here. So those are the two options you have to pick between when you see a nerve running down here. But remember that the vagus nerve is running with the blood vessel, with the common carotid artery. So, uh, right. Um, I'm going to take the lungs out. So the, that, that, that left vagus nerve, well, we have the arch of the aorta. So the aorta comes out of the heart, passes to the left, arches posteriorly, and that's the vagus nerve now. So the next rule you have to remember is that when, so the vagus nerve is going through the superior thoracic aperture to enter the thorax, and it wants to get to the diaphragm. And the way it's gonna get through the diaphragm is by following the esophagus. So once the vagus nerve enters the thorax, it's gonna try and get to the esophagus pretty much as quickly as it can. So on the left side, it's gonna run around the aortic arch. Oh, and we can see, can we? Yeah, and we can see it running with the esophagus down here to the diaphragm. 
And then that's the left side. On the right side is different because we're asymmetrical now. Hmm. So <laughs> there's the esophagus on the right. Yeah, so that's the, the vagus nerve on the right, running down the right side of the esophagus. And we're kind of missing a little bit here, but yeah, the, the vagus nerve will descend with the common carotid artery into the thorax. And then once it gets down here, it's gonna dive down to the esophagus. Now, what we're seeing another branch here wrapping around there. What's happening here is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So because of some fun embryology um, and the way all of this formed, the recurrent laryngeal nerve branches from the vagus in the chest, essentially, and then is, it loops around the subclavian artery on the right and runs up the posterior right corner of the trachea next to the esophagus and follows the trachea up and at the top of the trachea is the larynx. So that's how the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates the larynx on the right. And then on the left, <coughs> um, the vagus nerve runs around the arch of the aorta there. And there it, there's the recurrent laryngeal nerve on that side. So it's looping around lateral to the ligamentum arteriosum. Um, which gives a clue as to why it's being tied down. And that recurrent laryngeal nerve will then run up with the trachea on that side to the larynx. But that there is the vagus nerve. So if I take off the airway, that's the vagus nerve there running down on either side of the thorax. We have uh, on either side of the esophagus. Now, the vagus nerve has reached the gastrointestinal tract, although the pharynx was really, wasn't it? So the vagus nerve will be innervating the muscles here, and there is an esophageal plexus forming on the esophagus. But the vagus nerve is also going to send and receive fibres from the lungs, um, and also is going to send and receive fibres to the heart. Classic example of parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation is that the heart beats at a regular rate because of the cells in the sinoatrial node depolarizing at a regular rate and triggering contractions of the atria and the ventricles. The parasympathetic innervation will then reduce that heart rate and the force of contraction. Whereas sympathetic innervation will increase the heart rate and the force of contraction. And what happens is we have these are the sympathetic nerves here, the sympathetic, sympathetic chain, sympathetic trunk. There is a cardiac plexus between um, the aorta and the trachea, essentially. And that plexus, a plexus is, um, you know, uh, I, I always describe it as, you know, um, cable tidying, organizing your wiring. So these are sympathetic fibers and parasympathetic fibers coming together and then running to the heart. So there's a cardiac plexus, uh, which the vagus nerve contributes to and will innervate the heart. And then that is kind of continuous with the pulmonary plexus, which we find around the, the hilum, the root of each lung. And the vagus nerve is also contributing to the pulmonary plexus on either side. And the pulmonary plexus is also a mixed, mixed nerve. So um, there is sensory information coming back from the lungs. There is smooth muscle in the lungs as well. Um, now look, so if the vagus nerve runs with the esophagus, that puts it in a perfect position to also send fibers to the cardiac plexus and the pulmonary plexus. Look, we have the, the esophagus. The airway is anterior to the esophagus, and then we have the, the heart anterior to that. Here's a fun thing. In the arch of the aorta are aortic bodies. Uh, these are chemoreceptors. They are looking at the dissolved CO2 in the blood, the partial pressure of oxygen, the pH of the blood, that sort of thing. And they're sending that information back to the brain, you've guessed it, through the vagus nerve, because look, it runs right around here. So aortic arch, aortic bodies, vagus nerve.
So as the vagus nerve descends either side of the esophagus, it also innervates the organs of the thorax. And then the esophagus passes through the diaphragm. So there's an opening in the diaphragm called the esophageal hiatus, and the esophagus passes the esophagus. The esophagus passes through uh, the diaphragm into the abdomen and the vagus nerve with it. Another model? Here is a model of the stomach. There's the esophagus passing through the uh, diaphragm and the esophagus then passes to the stomach. The stomach then continues as the duodenum. And the yellow we can see here, this is the vagus nerve. But whereas in the abdomen, sorry, whereas in the thorax, we had a left vagus nerve and a right vagus nerve either side of the, the esophagus, what happens in the embryo is that the, the tube that's forming the gastrointestinal tract at the level of the stomach, it rotates like that, which brings the left vagus nerve to the anterior surface of the stomach and the right vagus nerve to the posterior surface of the stomach. So in the abdomen, the vagus nerve often gets referred to as the anterior vagal trunk and the posterior vagal trunk, and that's why. Now, we're at the gastrointestinal tract, sorted. Uh, we're innovating the stomach. Uh, we're now sending the parasympathetic innovation to the gastrointestinal tract for rest and digest. There's a little bit more. Back to the torso model. Let's take the liver out. Here's the stomach. Take the stomach out. I'll take out the whole, the organs of the, of the abdomen. And now we can see the aorta. Now what we would see if we were looking at a cadaver and we looked carefully is we'd see another plexus. This is the celiac trunk, this, an artery, the first anterior branch from the aorta. And this is the superior mesenteric artery. And we'd see another plexus, the celiac plexus, and that would be continuous with the mesenteric plexus. And again, those plexuses are mixed sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers and visceral afferents running through as well. So that posterior vagal trunk contributes to the celiac plexus and uh, the superior mesenteric plexus. Does the anterior vagal trunk get involved as well? Maybe, who knows. Um, but that's the typical description. And then the arteries go off and supply blood to the structures of the foregut and the midgut. That is, they supply blood to the, gas, the small intestine um, and then the large intestine as far as the transverse colon, about this far away along. And the, um, the parasympathetic fibers from the vagus nerve follow the same routes as the blood vessels. So the textbook description is that the vagus will innervate the gastrointestinal tract as far as about two thirds of the way along the transverse colon. And then there are pelvic uh, nerves that send parasympathetic fibers from the pelvis and they will uh, supply the descending colon, the remainder of the colon. But certainly now we have lost sight of the, the vagus nerve. It's off innovating the gastrointestinal tract. How far does it go? We may yet find out more things. Um, that's the nature of science, right? But there you go, hopefully that was useful. That was a visual run through of the root of the vagus nerve. So hopefully um, you've got a clearer idea of how it runs down the neck, how it enters the thorax, how it runs with these arteries, how it runs with the esophagus, gets through here, uh, gets down into the abdomen and then phew, does its thing down there. The path of the vagus nerve. Awesome, right. Uh, see you next week.